what is up what is up so right now this is going to be the another one of these reddit dota 2 leagues this is an in-house this is uh i believe this is 10 random players uh basically dodgeball rules just uh two separate teams of individual players i don't think anyone's on a team <clears throat> so uh, they might not have the best team coordination, but we'll see what they can pull out, and let's hope my internet stays up. Gaben, please, no DDoS Arena. Um, I am going to be uploading this to my YouTube, so uh, if you do not get a chance to check it out here, uh, check it out there. And my name is Trips, for all of you that don't know, or for all of you that watch the YouTube VOD. <clears throat> So, well, actually, a little bit of a slow band coming out right now. Switch back over to the chat. <laughs> so, Undying Ban, pretty common ban that we've seen lately. Uh, just a really strong early game hero, as well as the Gyrocopter. Same thing, really strong AoE, uh, really strong carry. <clears throat> a couple other bands I'm expecting. Visage, so Drow. Um, they could go Drow, Quaswax Invoker. Gob me a shout out and say Tyler. There you go. Um. <laughs> uh, some other bands, Lion maybe. Um. Mm. The Shadow Fiend. They could pick up a lion here. Um, if they're going to go with the general strategy of picking up maybe a, a support first. If they're not going to pick up a support, per, uh, support first, excuse me while I move my microphone a bit. I hope it doesn't mess with the audio. Okay. Um, so yeah, we could see a lion coming out first. We could see a Drow, like I said. I don't know if that's first pick, though. Could see a couple of things that we saw at the Summit 2. Something like Coddle Jungle, or we could see... Give me a shout-out and say Keenan, Like Keenan and Kel. Which Doctor being picked up? Pretty good support, like I said. Uh, pick up the supports first. Uh... If he can get that Aghanim Scepter out, he'll be able to get the bounces on his uh, ultimate, his Death Ward. <clears throat> Usually, um, good support, or good early ganker, get a smoke gank off early. Even, you know, nice harass, just with the right click sometimes. If you get a, if you get a nice Five cask bounce, remaining. you can stun up the offlaner, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. Lena being picked up. Another, if they run her mid, it's, I mean, it's possible they're just going to run her support and just kind of do, like, the whole uh, roam, and if they give her a setup, maybe she won't have to go Yules, but she'll eventually go Yules so she can solo setup. But it's possible they'll just run her mid. Very strong. Intellect Heroes are strong in this patch. Get her a good Yules, probably phase into Aghanim Scepter. Even though it doesn't increase the range anymore, it does do a whole hell of a lot of damage. Earth Shaker, Earthquaker, Mud Maker, Milkshake. I don't know where I'm going with this, but Earth Shaker is definitely another strong pick. Hard stuns, so now they have double stuns, triple stuns if you count as ultimate, and I mean quad stuns if you count as enchant totem. But a nice defensive support, uh, also a good gank if uh, a ganker to protect the mid lane. Rubik, um, there's I mean the Rubik. There's tons of things for him to steal. They can take obviously the Lena all. They can play. You can take the Dragon Slave. You can take Fisher, Echo Slam, and I mean a, a really good pickup at this point. Because even if they do pick nothing else, you already got quality things to steal. Puck being banned out though. I don't. I mean, it's all right, I guess, with the Earthshaker because it kind of guarantees you the with the Mystic Coil. Or no, it's Dream Coil, not Mystic Coil. Dream Coil. With the Dream Coil, 
kind of guarantees you a decent Echo Slime unless they spread out perfectly. All right, see you around. Pugna being banned out? I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe for the high mana cost. Uh, the Juggernaut, though. Nice carry. And the Dragon Knight. A very, uh, it's actually also a very popular mid. Good push. Queen of Pain getting through, though. An extremely strong offlaner, honestly, and mid. Uh, I've been uh, hearing things like you can run her even as a 1. No, I cannot. And... What do we expect for carries? Gyrocopter's banned out. I don't know if they'll get the Drow if they don't have the Visage. They could pick... Slark's okay. They could pick... I'm like blanking. I mean, Storm Spirit's even a decent carry. If you really want him to be. Yep, there's the Slark. Radiant team pick. So, back on the Radiant side, if Quap's going to be off lane, maybe mid they'll go... They can't do the Shadow Fiend, they can't do the Dragon Knight, those are very popular. Mm, Zeus. Zeus is decent. They'd have pretty squishy heroes, but... War Machine 44, good luck with the cast OBS Buddy U. Thank you. <clears throat> a little bit of a slow draft. I don't have much to uh, say about this. I'm trying to figure out what what they could run against this. Against, I mean, they could do a Nyx off lane just because of the heavy amount of intellect they got going on on the dire side. They could do things like. I mean, I've even seen there. Yep, there's the Viper. Uh, they don't have anything strong magic damage, but Viper is definitely a dominating, uh, a lane dominator, just like the Quap. So if they run the Queen off lane, Viper mid, or Shaker Lena support, they still need that carry roll, and they need something that can deal with the Slark. I mean, they could run an Annie Mage, but that's too a little bit too late game, in my opinion. I guess we'll just have to see what they bring to the table here. But an offlaner for the Dyer, they could run a Centaur, they could run Tidehunter, but I haven't really seen much Tide. Clockwork, I've seen a lot of Clockwork. I don't know, I mean Clockwork's good against the Earthshaker because if you cogs in the Clockwork with Battery Assault, Earthshaker can literally do nothing. Like, you just, most of his spells have, there's the clockwork. Most of his spells just have, like, a longer animation because of the amount of stun that they have on them. They have that negative effect of having the animation on them. So the battery assault with the ticks, you just, you get caught in the animation. You're, like, glitching out, basically. Who could they ban out as far as a carry goes? Nothing like a Medusa, nothing like... I mean, they could pick the AM, but I don't see it. Luna... Uh, Clinks is actually okay. Phantom Assassin I did not expect. Radiant team pick. I don't think I've seen a lot of her that much from what I've watched, at least. But the, the Radiant did ban out the Storm Spirit there. Um... It's quite possible they could run something like a Nature's Prophet safe lane and then go like a Quap or Shaker Lena or like a Viper or Shaker Lena aggressive. Ten it's a little bit risky. Five 
trying to adhere to the new meta and but it also comes down to teams I mean we could see something crazy like a Leshrac Leshrac's pretty dominant um, if you can get the snowball rolling you can't really stop it but other than that 44 seconds ticking down for the Radiant right now. I mean, they could just use all of this reserve time right now and just think about it extensively and understand, you know, all right, they have a Witch Doctor, so they have decent uh, stun. They have decent uh, team fight abilities. Rubik's going to be able to have the Fisher, the Dragon Slave. If you go, I mean, even the Quapple is amazing. Slark's going to be able to be really aggressive, going to be able to jump on that queen. Ooh, the Broodmother. Okay, yeah. So it could be a Broodmother offlane. And then you're going to run the Quap safe lane or the Viper safe lane. I guess they could... That's either or. But the Lena and the Earthshaker are definitely going to be supporting, roaming, helping out the other lanes. It looks like the Dyer need a mid, though. But who can they run against the Viper? Nothing super heavy magic nuke. They don't have the Dragon Knight. They don't have the Shadow Fiend. I mean, they could run up against... They could run something as far as uh, magic damage goes. They could run something like that and just not be afraid of it. And hope that the lane goes well. Or, like, just a heavy farmer. They could run an Alchemist. I've seen that. I think I said that earlier. Nope, oh, but there's a Zeus. So... If the Viper's safe lane, they shouldn't have too much of a problem. The Quap's still going to kind of dominate the lane, but I don't see them dying too much unless the Zeus has a horrible lane. But it could be... I mean, it's all dependent on skill, I guess, to the point. <clears throat> so, here we are getting into the game right now. And if we're going to go ahead and take the looks, look at the team right now, we got K Stig on the Viper, Stuvan on the Queen of Pain, Uther Party on the Broodmother, the Irritated Sloth on the Earthshaker, Bear Bear on the Lena, Mickle the Pickle on the Clockwork, SBX320 on the Zeus, Medic on the Rubik, Smiles on the Slark, and Tortilla King on the Witch Doctor. I don't know how coordinated the teams are going to be. I, I expect at least um, a decent a decent skill level here and we could see some early aggression they could want to go ahead and go and like maybe place an aggressive ward uh, most of the team is sticking together however the brood ooh, the brood is gonna go solo bot and they're they are gonna have that aggressive top lane um, a ward being placed here by the radiant just probably so they can scout out a little bit further than usual I think it's like right around here so they are going to be able to see all three of the dire heroes. Getting pings out from pink, saying Broodmother's bot. Going to start off with the soul ring, the ma enchanted mango. Let's look at some of these. Oh, here comes the rune. A few right clicks. Gets the, the slark fissured, but I mean the slark just started pounce. Light strike array, a few cast bounce, and the Slark's forced to kind of jump into the neutral camp. He's not going to die from it, but he's definitely taking a lot of harass. Just going to pop a tango, and honestly, he might have to just... Yeah, he's going to have to waste his self. So a lot of regen actually spent right there. And another dire observer being placed right up here, but the Radiant do see it. They know what's going on. As far as this laying down bot goes, I really expect the Broodmother to torture this uh, clockwork. If this Broodmother knows what's good for her, she's going to get a lot of uh, farm out of the jungle. She's going to get, maybe she'll stack up her spiders. And the clockwork's not going to be able to do too much because even if he levels up that battery assault, the battery assault's going to split between all the spiderlings. So it's just going to, it's just not going to do anything unless the clockwork goes for some crazy, like, Max Rocket Flare build and uh, a little bit of mana regen. Maybe he'll build like a um, 
not regen, but a little bit extra mana. Maybe he'll build like a drums. And you're going to see a lot of... Uh, the, the Slark's being really passive here. He's sitting back a lot, but when they get the positioning, they can be pretty aggressive. And the Fissure actually locks off the Lina. The Lina's just going to have to run away. And a few more right clicks, and she's going to go down. A Selve trying to get out of there. That's actually a decent Selve, but the Pounce is going to come back up. In just a second, the Light Strike Array goes off. But one right click from the Witch Doctor, and that's first blood. It's going to set her back a little bit. The Fissure being telekinesis up here, thrown back a little bit. The Viper coming over to help. A few right clicks, but don't think they're going to act upon this. They could just take the first blood, and they're like, all right, we got it, we got it. We're doing all right. Sage's Master already going to be going ahead and picked up on the Broodmother. Going to be going for that early soul ring. A few right clicks from the uh, Viper with the orbs. Doing a lot of harass on the Slark. I mean, if I were this Viper, I'd be heavily harassing the Slark, because if you look at his inventory, he has one tango. He cannot do anything. I mean, he could get pulled tango or uh, pulled regen from his supports, but other than that, it's like they're gonna be losing out a lot in this lane. Up top again, telekinesis, fissure, a few right clicks, but a cast goes off in the other. In the radiance a little bit too close. A few right clicks is gonna take down the earthshaker, but can they get the slark? The more important kill here. Nice body blocks, but the Rubik may pay with it. Hey, with his life, they could dive this. They're not going to, though. Light Strike Array going to miss on the Witch Doctor, and the Witch Doctor's trying to get a little bit of something out of this. But, uh, a decent, honestly, decent harass from this Viper. They may not have gotten a kill out of this, but they definitely forced the Slark out of lane, doing that Walk of Shame back to the base. Maybe his supports are going to drop him a TP or something. But... I mean, they definitely, the Viper's going to get a lot of experience out of this. Let's look at levels real fast. Um, Viper is definitely beating, I don't know, Viper's actually tied with Slark. However, the Earthshaker is a little bit higher than the ra or the Dire Supports. Dire Supports lacking a little bit, but them still level 1 right now. The Co-op, the Broodmother, the Clockwork, and the Zeus all achieving level six or level 4 already. Mid lane, the Co-op... Actually taking a lot of harass from this Zeus. Is this Zeus maxing his lightning bolt? He is. He went for the 1-2-1 one, one so far. But as far as... <clears throat> excuse me. As far as last hits go, the Radiant are definitely leading. Uh, maybe not by too much, but... In every lane but top, they've gotten a decent amount of farm. Obviously, there's a lot of action going on top. Unfortunate for that Zeus. Why he loves that bounty rune, that regen, probably would have been a little bit better for him but to be able to get off a few extra lightning bolts. And like I said, it looks like this. It looks like this clockwork's just going to get pushed out of lane. A decent nuke, but not definitely not going to act on it. Broodmother's a little bit too squishy to run underneath that tower like that. See a couple pings over here. They think they have a ward, maybe, or they're just pinging out the supports, being right here. Bless yourself. Did miss a kill on mid. Zeus pooning that, uh. Pooned the Queen of Pain. They're digging themselves a little bit. Light Strike Array, a nice little poke. Gonna give Lena. Does that actually give Lena vision right here? More pings coming out saying they're still there. Going to go ahead and place that sentry where they want to get rid of this observer. And if they pressure enough, a cast goes off. Light Strike Array hits on the Rubik. Maledict, as well as a few right clicks on the Slark. The Slark actually went a little bit aggressive. Nice wand by the Lena. Lena's going to make it out, but she does have the Maledict on her. A few right clicks and some creep damage. going to take her out, whereas the Viper is going to chase down the Rubik. Nothing he can do with the creep wave on him. So they're definitely going to defend this observer, but... They kind of get the trade out of this. Uh, pay a Lena for a Slark. I, I kind of would take that any day. That's uh, support for a carry. Not really too much out of that, but if you... Oh, wow. Quap rotating top with the haste. She's going to take out the Rubik, and can she get more out of this? Witch Doctor, all he has is maybe one cast, but it's not going to bounce anywhere. It's just going to go on her with for a nice mini stun. If you right clicks the Scream. Oh, and actually she has her ultimate already. Slark's gonna, oh, it looked like Slark was gonna try to go for the pounce there, but 
Kind of backed off. She's going to run right into the Zeus, bottle up a little bit. Can Zeus actually take her out? He's going to be able to get off maybe a lightning bolt and two. No, he's not going to be able to ult for it, though. Just going to kind of walk back to lane. Saying, hey. Hey, I've been following you the whole time. So, the Radiant actually doing pretty decent with this aggressive. Definitely stopping the Slark's farm. Slark pretty much is not going to go anywhere. And they're helping out their Broodmother a lot down here. This Brood is probably doing, oh yeah, very decently. She could honestly go for the Midas here. Nice Fissure. Pounce away. Light Striker Ray is going to land on the Rubik, so they're going to change their mind. Dragon Slave going off. A nice cast by the Witch Doctor to save the Rubik. Is he going to live through it, though? Wow. Under 10 health by the Rubik. Rubik's going to take that walk of shame. He's saying, hey, Slark, it wasn't that bad, was it? Like I said, probably going to, yep, max that rocket flare. Just trying to harass down those spiderlings. And really, the Slark is doing so poorly. Just being out farmed, completely shut down. Only 6 CS right now. Um... I don't know a way out of this for Slark as far as the lane goes. Maybe if they rotate and put some pressure elsewhere, they can help him out a little bit. Spiderling's almost circled around that clockwork, but he's going to make it out. And the Slark just kind of pushed back. There's four heroes top, and they're putting a lot of pressure. Yeah, the Co-op's losing a little bit of farm, but she's just kind of waiting up here because if they can just take out this Slark, get the tower... And then rotate elsewhere, let the co-op farm a little bit more. The co-op can get a lot out of it. The, the Zeus is kind of all by his lonesome, getting a lot of experience. Hmm. Let's go ahead and back, take a look at levels real fast right now. Uh, all the supports in the game are under level 6, including Slark and Viper. Zeus coming out. Zeus is going to go ahead and use his ultimate. Nice Fisher and a few right clicks. With the orbs from the Viper, as well as the Dragon Slave did not go out. Cogs in the co-op. Can she make it out, though? If you right-click, she doesn't really care about the clockwork, because he's just going to get Dragon Slaved and Light Striker Red. It's actually pretty, pretty decent of that co-op. She, uh, she was in pretty deep and just didn't panic. She knew she had it okay. She could just right-click the supports, and there's not much they could do about that. Rubik is stacking, maybe? Yep. Saying, well, I guess if I'm walking back to base, I can at least do in some productful. Productive. Productful? That's not a word. Pause coming out. Lag one sec. This isn't Dota without a, without a pause, folks. It's not Dota without a pause. We can take a look at some items right now coming out. Um, anything extreme. Soul Ring on the Broodmother. It's been there for a while. Got a couple of smokes on the Radiant supports. Uh, arcane Boots on the Zeus. And Trinkles on the Witch Doctor. Pretty fast Trinkles for the Witch Doctor. Only level 3 right now, though. Nothing too substantial. Actually, Midas just being picked up. 9-minute Midas. Not horrible from the Viper. And a few pings coming out saying maybe they want to go on this... Slark? Tier 2 already being pressured down bot by this Broodmother. And the heavy pressure they have going on up top, there's nothing they can do. Maybe they can rotate a few supports over with some dust and just kind of trash the Tier 1 top. Because, to be honest, what are they going to do? What are they going to do top? I don't think they can actually fight these. I think they changed their strategy. I think they just say, okay, we're done top. We move. We just, we rotate. This Brood is level 8, whereas the heroes on the Dire are 2 and 3. But maybe a good hook, Cogs, Dust. I really don't know. I think the Dire are a little bit up a river with no paddle right now. Hey, it's being popped out by the Zeus coming in saying, hey! I'm here. This is my tower. A few TPs coming in. Cog. Gonna cogs in maybe? Nope. Just using the battery assault. Getting pretty close. A few lightning bolts. Some arc lightning. A telekinesis. Cogs. Wow. 
What a telekinesis positioning. I don't even know if that was meant to be like that, but telekinesis right outside the cogs, and the cogs actually activated off of that and did a bunch of damage. The Dyer actually getting 1,500 out of that rotation. So they kind of did the opposite of what I said. Instead of saying, all right, we're done with top, let's rotate bot, the, uh, the clockwork was like, all right, I can't sit down here anymore. I need to go help my team. And what he did, he they got everyone top, and they put the pressure off the top. So maybe they can catch up a little bit. Let's go back to the last hits. This cop looks like she's going a little bit aggressive. Actually standing right on top of uh, Dire Observer Ward and just completely deleting the Witch Doctor. Holy crap. <clears throat> so, Radiant are definitely going to look to push this tower, easily kind of taking this top tower. Gold for the Radiant is definitely in their favor. The experience not so much, though. The gold is from the towers, because right now they have two tier ones. And they're, I mean, they're honestly kind of looking at a tier two if it's not going to get denied. Whereas their towers across the map are, besides mid, are barely touched. The only reason mid is uh, touched is because the Quap rotated top so much that the Zeus just kept pushing in waves. Nice vision down bot over this rune. So they're definitely going to see this Quap. They could say, hey, Quap's got a bounty. Nothing too substantial in her inventory, but. She's going to go ahead and do a trick. She's going <laughs> to drop her Null Talisman to regen to get some of that free mana. Ruby's going to go ahead and pick up the Arcanes. Actually, he just got those Arcanes. Mid, though, a definite gank and so much going on. Nothing could be done to this clockwork. Nice ping coming out. And they're kind of just looking to 5-man, probably. Well, four man. The brood doesn't count. What can the dyer do? Maybe wait for the clock and then go in? But the witch doctor doesn't have an ult yet. I think they can maybe make a turnaround when the witch doctor gets an ult. Maybe that's a plan. Maybe they just... Okay. So, the Zeus coming out. Slark's actually going to land a pounce up here. Lena goes down so fast. Telekinesis, Maledict, a few right clicks. Can they get a hook? Zeus ult, a few right clicks. That Maledict. Oh, stopped the hook. Nice animation stop. Gonna hook the Earthshaker, but we do miss the Quap taking out the the Witch Doctor. So a uh, four for two trade, definitely in favor of the Dyer. So they're taking a few of these fights back. This clock is helping them out a lot, as well as the Zeus. The Zeus did his fair share. I mean, he pressed R, so, you know, good on you, Zeus. You pressed R. You did your job, man. Um, but it looked like the Radiant split up. The Radiant was just like, oh, God, um, you know, they're engaging. We just got to leave. We got to just get out. But during all that commotion, Brood's just going ahead and farming, farming up here. 4,300 gold on the Brood right now. What is she building? Could it be a Radiance? Really? Are you really going for a Radiance first item? I mean, it's amazing if you can get it. I mean, if she's going to get it like 16 minutes, it's going to be insane. I mean, her farm is out of the park, though. Like, 73 last hits. This clock actually has a lot, but I think that's inflated from the Spiderlings. I don't think that uh, is actual like creeps or ju even jungle creeps. Up top, miss the quap, taking out the slark, but the maledict with a few right clicks. Witch doctor is gonna be able to take out the quap, and that actually should give witch doctor. Yeah, witch doctor is gonna get a lot of experience off of that. And they're saying we gotta end up dealing with this brood. Broods, how much? Only. Oh, actually, she was 4k unreliable. Clockwork going to catch out this Earthshaker, and that's what I'm talking about. 
if you have an Earthshaker on the other team and you pick a and you pick a Clockwork, that's your target. That's your rival the entire game. If you see that guy by himself, it's a free kill, 100% free kill. I mean, obviously, if his team acts on it, you're not gonna have the best of days if they bring enough with you. But if you have vision of the rest of the team and you have confidence that they're not gonna make it there in time, and it's just the Earthshaker. He can't. He literally cannot do anything against you. It's quite impossible. So, Rubik, only being able to feel, steal Viper Strike so far. Um, not gonna be able to really use it on anybody, but maybe the Clop and the Lino. Clop would be decent, but Clop's definitely about her ulti. She doesn't really care. I mean, she she loves the right clicks, but. Oh wow, the hook shot, decently tried, was trying to land it on that uh, the Viper before he got the Illusion Rune. Wow, Shadow Strike, a few right clicks, as well as a few right clicks on this, <laughs> on the Clockwork who cogs himself in, and the Lacuna Blade just deleting the Zeus. A little bit of a flub team fight there for the Dyer, they've been uh, showing a little bit of, you know, the ability to come back and then they just kind of like... They uh, they hiccuped a little bit. They had a they had a nice hiccup, and it's swinging back, right back into the radiant favor. Dragon slave pushing out the wave. Do they want to at least do a little bit of damage to this tower? Maybe. Chant totem. Boom. I got maybe they want. They're definitely not gonna be able to take this, but. A slark coming around in the background up here. I don't know if they Dyer's saw that. Or Shaker senses something. He needs the vision up here. Make sure he's doing a good job. He doesn't want to get his team, but he, he might get caught out here. Slark's going to land a pounce on the Earth Shaker. Going for the Fisher. He actually fishes himself in. Enchant Totem, but there's nothing he can do to get out of this. Quap jumps in, noticing that she needs to be in the team fight. BKB. A few right clicks. A nice jump in. She has a little bit longer on her BKB before she gets caught out. Light Strike Array, but I don't think it landed on anybody. A nice Zeus ult. Tried to get the Death Ward off. Can they get a few more right clicks? She's going to... Oh! Her, le or her blink was just off cooldown. So yeah, that was actually in favor of the Dyer there. They lost three on the Radiant, but pff, who cares? Who cares when... <laughs> When Brood is over here taking tier threes. And no, she didn't go for the Radiance. She went for the straight Necro three, which is good. It's real good. And then Necro threes are going to go right for the ranged barracks. Go for the range. What are you doing? These are going to heal. Yeah. I mean, no, you didn't get them, but these don't heal. This is This is permanent, man. 18 minutes and you half of a range racks down already. Gonna go ahead and set up that sentry award so just in case they need a TP in for some reason. Invisibility. I don't know what Dyer are gonna do about this brood. Brood is pretty high up there. Shadow Strike. Hook shot. Oh! The sonic wave. Just taken out the Witch Doctor almost every time. How much health does he even have? It's not going to display. How much damage? 450? I don't, I, did, I wouldn't think that would do that much. But now, they lost three on the Dyer. They're just going to be able to push in. If they push really hard, what are they going to do? Unless, I mean, none of the Dyer have buybacks, so... This is Rax. This is 100% free Rax for the for the Radiant. Fortunately, they didn't ever take up. They didn't ever take that tier two, so they're not gonna be able to get the mid Rax. But I don't. I don't think I see a way out of this for the Dyer. I mean, they can try to win a few fights, but Rax at 20 minutes. Unless, unless the Radiant throw real hard, like real, real hard, I, uh, I, I don't, I don't see an out in here. Well, 
we can sit back mid lane on this Viper. We can take a look at some of these items coming out. Midas, Aquila, Ogre Club, maybe going into the BKB. BKB on the Quap, tier, or uh, Necro 3, we called that on the Broodmother. Uh, the actual the Yule Scepter just being picked up on the Lena. Blade Mail on the Clockwork. Blink Dagger on the Zeus. And then he's probably going to go for the Hood. And Blink Dagger on the Rubik, as well as the Mana Boots. Slark going for probably a Shadow Blade, and Witch Doctor, I think he was trying to build the Yules, but not going to get too much out of it. I don't know why he would go Yules, to be honest. Kind of seems pointless for him. I mean, don't get me wrong, it helps out his uh, his kid a little bit, but not. it's not nothing like Lena. You don't need that type of a setup on a Witch Doctor. So... Hmm. If I were the Dyer, what would I do? Well, in what? Is it 100? It's 14, right? Yep, 14. So, right now, Slark has a Shadow Blade. I say they smoke up and they gank. They smoke gank right now. But if you take a look, they don't have any smokes out. They don't, I, don't, I don't think they've touched a smoke the game. this game. No. And the Radiant just doing what they do. Going for it. Going the distance. I mean, the Radiant have smokes out. I don't think I've seen them use one yet. But they definitely have one out. And because of this opening, this just crater in the defense of the Dyer, I... They're, they're going to have to send somebody down there. And so they're just, they can just free pressure this top lane. Broodmother, Treads, Tier 3, Necronomicon, Soul Ring, almost 3k gold already again. What do you go for? Maybe just just say hell, you know, to hell with it, go AC. Just heavy push, it'll increase the damage, increase the attack speed of your broodlings, increase the armor of your broodlings, lower the armor of the tower. It'll actually increase the Necronomicons too. She's just gonna sit up here and just make her nest. Don't know what's getting pinged out over here, but maybe they're saying, hey, are they gonna, you know, maybe there's a courier over there? Hmm. So, Slark, he's got his Shadow Blade, he's got his Orb Venom. I don't know what he's farming for. I mean, he doesn't want to obviously run into five heroes in the jungle. But, like, if he were to run in, into maybe... <laughs> See, I mean, like, if he were to run into maybe Lino and dodge the Light Strike Array, but you can't because she has Yules. Oh, nice guess. Nice guess, Clockwork. <clears throat> hmm. They're holding on to their pride a little bit. I don't... I mean, I've said it a few times, I don't see a way out, but I really don't. Unless Rubik pulls some big playoff, followed up with a Death Ward and Zeus ult. There's a possibility that they wipe the team just because of that much damage coming out, but with a BKB on Viper, BKB on the Quap, no other BKBs yet, but the two cores. I don't think the Radiant are afraid either, because they're not, I mean, they're not worried about late game, because, I mean, Slark really doesn't have that he doesn't have that tempo set up yet. He's not even close. The only way out of this, I think, is at fault of the Radiant. Definitely at fault of the Radiant.
Is there any other big items being picked up right now? Hmm. Oh, Agnum Scepter on the Quap. Daedalus or Desolator on the Broodmother. So I mean, she's just gonna eat through towers more so than she already has. 3k experience with a 13k gold lead. Uh, the Dyer, maybe they're gonna give it one last hurrah, and if they uh, if they fail, they'll give up. But I'm not one to give up, you know, when there's a chance. But nobody likes a, you know, a lot. You'd much rather lose and learn about your mistakes than just make it a make it like painfully longer. Because if they lose another fight and then they hold off for 15 minutes. Which, pff, I don't know how they would lose a fight and then hold off. If they lose a fight, they're probably it's probably over anyways. And it's I mean, they're kind of stuck. They're kind of stuck in their base. They can't, they're just being smothered out. I mean, if they want to keep clearing and clearing and clearing waves of creeps, that's fine, but... There's going to be a point where the I mean it shifts, and they're a lot low. They're a lot higher level. I mean, the Rubik's level eleven, the Quap's level what six fifteen. And she's just going to BKB and jump right in and just ult the Sonic Wave, the Witch Doctor. Down mid though, the Slark tries to make a sneaky play jumping in, but Light Strike Array. Zeus ult actually taking out two right now. Rubik jumps in. Get a telekinesis off. Oh, the BKB is out, actually. I think he tried. I think he w turned back. That was the turn back. But while this is going on, they're pushing in top. And you lost your Slark, and you lost your two supports again. Let's go back to light. Let's go actually check out net worth. So net worth-wise... Radiant are p leagues ahead. I mean, by far. Just. And if had if need be, Rubik has a buyback. Zeus has a buyback. Oh, look at it go! Look at you go. I wonder if this brood would make a move on this witch doctor. I mean. I think she could. She kind of screwed up. She's not in her net anymore, or her webs anymore, so she can't get over there, but... Is she using her broodlings? Yep, she's just using her broodlings to farm the jungle. Rocket flares as much as he can, pushing out the wave, doing some scouting, getting some vision for his team. Where's the tipping point? Where's, uh... Where's their smoke? They could smoke and just wrap around, maybe? Or it looks like the Radiant are probably just gonna be like, okay, we need to end this game. We need to... Take Roche and one last hoorah. Maybe they take Roche and say screw it and push up bot and fight them right here. Maybe they just fight them in this area and let Brood just destroy that lane. But Roshan has fallen to the radio. Rubik doesn't have anything in his arsenal right now, so he's going to have to pick something up mid-fight. Is Clock rocking the eggs yet? Nope. He's got the point booster and 1300, but he's about 17 away from uh, the rest of it. It looks like they're just going to push up mid. Going to try to steal Viper Strike from the Viper, because it's the only thing you can steal from him. But... Brood actually up top. Brood's gonna start ticking away at this tower. 
and it's just gonna be like a I mean it's really just gonna be like a teeter-totter they go for mid and then brood pushes and then they go for brood and then mid pushes actually here we go witch doctor jumps in completely out of position Viper is gonna go for the Viper strike he doesn't care he pops his BKB a few right clicks nice echo slam solo on the on the on the slark I blanked there for a second um, definitely not going to kill him, but takes him out of the fight for a little bit. A few things. Slark's going to take out a few of them. Viper's coming back, though. But Viper backs off. And Brood, <laughs> during that scuffle, Brood just says, Who needs the team? It's an objective game. Wow, what a dodge. A few right clicks. Unstable hunger. Unstable hunger. Unstable hunger. Where's he? I don't know. She actually might get taken out here if they can get vision. Clop jumps in, just says, eat my sonic wave. And as they chase, chase Clop, guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back again? And that is going to be... Melee Rex. While mid, taking out the whole team. GG called. And that's the game for the Dire. So, I mean, that's that's what I meant. They they got bottom racks at 20 minutes, and it kind of just got drawn out for 12 minutes as everybody kind of, you know, beat around the bush for 12 minutes and was like, oh, God, oh, God, I don't, you know, like, we don't want to give up, but what else could they have done? Nice game. Going to be uploading this VOD, and I uh, hope you guys liked it.